When it comes to the theory of deliberate, unintelligent design, nothing is more self-evident than the nerve ending, or the pain receptor. Far too severe in sensitivity, and far too much in quantity. Instead of giving us trillions upon trillions of these sensitive nerve endings, why couldn't they have just given us maybe, I don't know, a couple thousand? And why did one nerve on one part of the body have to connect with a nerve on the complete opposite end of the body? For instance, you throw your back out, but you don't just feel it in the disc that has been slipped. It's not just isolated in that one small area. It actually shoots up to the entirety of your back, to your shoulders. And why does the distance of pain have to supersede the area that's in, that, that's been afflicted? You know, say I have uh, a toothache on the molar on the left side of my jaw, but I don't just feel it there. Because of all that, all that interconnectivity of nerve endings, you actually feel it on the entirety of your jaw and even into your eardrums, right? You would think that when it comes to the grand architect who made our biology, there would have been some kind of second opinion that gave advocacy to pain management. And he would say, all right, there's a fatal flaw with your design, with this highway of nerve endings that you might call the ouch that fucking hurts highway. Here's what it is. For one, why do we have to have trillions of these fucking things? And why do those trillions have to be as sensitive as they are? Couldn't we have less nerve endings and make them far less sensitive? And not only that, but do we have to have the interconnectivity of nerves that go from one portion of the body all the way down to the opposite end, shouldn't we have maybe a sort of cutoff point where these microscopic strings that we might call nerve endings, they will only occupy a small area and then they will be a sever on both ends and it will just occupy that area so it doesn't have a far distance that it travels. The distance is localized and then it will go down and continue so so on and so forth. So l look at my hand. Instead of it being like this, like that's the, that's the nerve ending. Okay, it, it's 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 more like this. And then there's a cutoff point, a snip, and then it kind of starts over and it does that throughout the body. So that way the distance of the pain is not going to travel as far and there's not going to be as many nerve endings and they're not going to be as sensitive the ones that are there. But because there wasn't that second opinion of the advocate of pain management, it makes me think that whoever designed our central nervous system to be the way that it is was actually a sadist who wanted chronic pain and the torture thereof to be something that creates such suffering that you can be a matrix battery where the archonic forces are going to feed from the agonizing pain of that open wound. That's what I think. If you ever have talked to a person with some sort of a chronic pain disease, whether it be a migraine headache, whether it be arthritis, whether it be this, that, or the other, their quality of life is absolute shit. Because how can you be happy? How can you be productive? How can you follow your life's true purpose if you're spending all of your time with an ice pack on the afflicted area? This is absolutely inhumane. And what got me thinking about this is actually my mother. She has an autoimmune disease and she spends a good portion of her day, every day, laying in bed going, 
Oh! It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I go in there and check on her. Hey, Mom, are you all right? Oh, yeah. I wish I could sleep, but the pain's too severe. Oh! I said, okay. Did you take your painkiller? Did you? I'm trying to be stoic about the situation. And she's like, yes, yes, yes. Now just please leave me alone. I, I want to be alone when I'm in pain. And I said, okay. And I closed the door and I'm thinking to myself, man, did it really have to be that way? You know, when you think of the purpose of pain, apparently it is supposed to be a form of bodily communication to the subject of consciousness that notifies that, hey, there is something that is compromising my survival. It is there by a threat, and it needs to be either removed immediately, or this sensation that's causing this pain needs to be addressed, and it needs to be remedied. It's like, okay, I get it. If there's something wrong with the body, the body needs a way of communicating that there's something that needs to be removed and addressed medicinally or otherwise. I, I, I get it. But here's an analogy. Think of the notifications that we get on our phone. You know, we have the option to put that bitch on silent or better yet, vibrate. But the kinds of notifications that we get when it comes to being informed that we're in pain is like being in a library and you have Ozzy Osbourne's crazy train as your ringtone. All of a sudden, I, 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 and it startles everybody that are trying to read and they give you dirty looks and you have that awkward, <laughs> let me just put that on silent. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But that analogy is exactly the types of notifications that we get for our physical pain in this world. We get gangster rap blasted at the gas station. We get an Ozzy Osbourne ringtone at the fucking library. Like, did, did, did it have to be so abrasive? I mean, hell, why do we live in a world where any form of physical pain has to exist? I mean, what if the body was designed in such a way where if something was detrimental to your survival and it needed to be addressed, the portion of the body in question would have some sort of a mechanism where it would just vibrate or maybe it would become discolored and it would have a lot of other ways to communicate that there's something wrong. But no, they gave you passing a fucking kidney stone. They gave you, you know, a hemorrhoid or all of these other embarrassing medical issues. And then you can make the argument, well, it's not nature that did that to you. It's human dietary error where something was introduced into the body that was alien and antagonistic and it created inflammation and the response of inflammation is pain, etc. I understand that argument, but you also gave us free will. You knew at some point that people were going to make bad decisions and you knew that inflammation was going to be a resultant thereof and you knew thereafter that severe pain and say all of the joints or what have you was going to ensue and you were discompassionate by creating all of those nerve endings that are akin to an open wound in a sewer that's how vulnerable we are as this species and i know plenty of people who have a picture perfect bill of health but yet they still suffer from some, some sort of a chronic pain disease. There's plenty of these people out there. And then the doctors say, oh, it's just genetics. Oh, it's just that. Oh, it's just this. But really, even these people who try to 
be as healthy as they can and they still have these conditions. Why do these conditions exist? And moreover, why did they have to be as uncomfortable as fucking possible with the type of pain that is so infuriating and so torturous that one would opt for euthanasia just to make it stop. One would contemplate unaliving themselves just to make it stop. They'll pray to God, please make the pain stop, please make the pain stop, but it doesn't. It's bullshit. We should not live in a world that has physical pain. We should not live in a world, especially, that has physical pain to the quality and quantity of severity in which it reaches. If pain is supposed to be a notification that your body gives that there's something wrong, it could notify me some other way. Use your imagination. How could it notify you? What would be your preference? What would be your preference? I would say a sort of uncomfortable vibration. Even though it's uncomfortable, it's not quite pain as we know it, but it's like, oh, this is um this is something that needs to be addressed. It's like it's like a sort of uncomfortable vibration that like just notifies you that you know something needs to be looked at. But no, rather than it being that way, we have arthritis where people are in so much fucking pain that they can't even move their wrist, elbows, the back of their neck, etc. My grandma had that issue. A lot of elderly have that issue. They're just laid up in bed all day. Can't do anything because the arthritis is so fucking severe. And that apparently is just something that's unavoidable for those types of people because it's a byproduct of just growing old. You're subject to the laws of entropy, where especially after you become a senior citizen, which I guess is sometime after 60, especially at that point, you start to become decrepit. And as your body slowly rots away, you're going to feel every last fuck inch of that pain. Pain is going to attack you one little microscopic fuck inch at a time, and it won't ever budge. You know, it's funny. We live in a world where we have chronic pain, chronic depression, but why not chronic happiness, chronic pleasure? Well, it's usually the other way around in a place like this. And I think it's all by design. See, there are a lot of benefits of being in your 20s. Uh, you're able-bodied, you usually have more vitality, and I don't really suffer with any type of uh, physical pain, to be honest. But it's the theoretical pain that I witness upon others that is extremely real for them, and I watch it, and it's really the equivalent of, even if I'm not feeling physical pain myself, just the fact that we live in a world where I know that you have somebody who got their fucking arm blown off and they feel all all of that uncomfortable not uncomfortability that agonizing fucking pain um like just the fact that i'm aware of the existence of physical pain and i know that other people are feeling it that itself is a type of pain for instance, um, there was a bit of a rodent issue that my parents had, and they used this poison called decon, which um, basically is like acid that pretty much burns them alive on the inside, and it's a slow, painful death. And I remember I was walking in the backyard, and I came across this mouse. And it looked at me with fear in its eyes. 
It was breathing really heavily. And I put myself in the mouse's position. I anthropomorphized my consciousness and I put it into the rat or the mouse. And I said to myself, had I ate that poison? And with my imagination, I picture being eat, being burned alive on the inside by that poison. All of a sudden, it was very strange. I, in a way, sympathized with the mouse to such a degree that I put myself into the mouse and I felt what that mouse was feeling. There was no separation between subject and object. Me as a subject became that, quote, object as if it was a subject no different than myself. And what did the mouse do? The mouse was guilty of no other crime than being born a mouse. Now, I'm not one of these, you know, hippies that think that rat poison should be banned and all methodologies of uh, exterminating these things should be banned because um, when these fuckers get in your house, they can cause a lot of collateral damage by the thousands. They can eat your water line. Uh, they can fuck up your electricity. They can cause fires, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have they're, they're unsanitary. Like I understand that they have to die, right? But I just think of I just think of the agony that was going on within that process of dying by way of that poison, and it and it kind of haunted me a little bit. But it's also like that when I look upon people who do suffer physical pain, I imagine the pain as my own, and then I feel it by way of mere neurons. Think of it this way. If you were strapped to a chair and you were forced to watch somebody be tortured right in front of you, that itself would be an extreme form of torture for you, the viewer, that would haunt you for the rest of your life, even though they didn't touch you. But you heard the screams. You seen the blood. You heard the cries of mercy, etc. That's an, that's an extreme analogy, but I feel much the same when I watch people that are in pain or just even being aware that pain exists for other people. It is a form of torture psychologically for me. And I just don't think it needed to be that way at all. It's completely fucking unnecessary. There was no will to kindness. There was no will to compassion. Whoever created this construct did so with complete and utter disregard for the sentience in question. In fact, if you think about it and you really understand the interconnectivity of nerve endings that is far reaching throughout the body, where a pain will shoot from one end of the body to the opposite end, and you think of all the nerve endings and how sensitive they are, it kind of makes you think that we were designed to be tortured. We were designed to have an agreed-upon actuality that, yes, in fact, you can be kidnapped, you can be tied up, and you can be tortured in the most uh, horrifying ways that you can imagine. Because if that wasn't the case, if we weren't designed to be tortured, then we wouldn't be torturable in the first place. Because we are torturable, that makes me think that we were designed to be tortured. And it's like the expression, you know, the tongue always returns to the sore tooth. You know, for example, I can get a lot of positive comments on my YouTube channel, but my tongue will return to the sore tooth when it comes to that one negative comment that I got. 
where that will take all of my attention and that will take first place in my mind. We're like that. You try to resist something, but it will only persist. That's exactly how it is with pain versus pleasure. Who cares if you have an orgasm or you enjoy your leisure time of relaxing on, you know, a comfortable piece of furniture? It's like, okay, I'm comfortable on this recliner. Sure. I ate a nice, delicious sandwich earlier today. I found it enjoyable. Maybe I busted a nut. Maybe it felt good. But who fucking cares when all the while you suffer from some sort of chronic pain? Who cares if all the while... Like, here's an example. Let us compare having an orgasm to stubbing your fucking toe. What is more severe? The pleasure or the pain? Obviously, it's the pain. Right? Just the fact that we live in a world where, theoretically, somebody can just break into your house and tie you up and do all kinds of horrible things to you just because we live in a world where that's even fucking possible, where there's people out there that are sadists that get off on putting other people through deliberate pain. It's a world that shouldn't even exist just because it has that as not only a potentiality, but an actuality. Okay? Right now, as we speak, there are thousands of people being tortured actively by a sadist. It's a fact. Right now, as we speak, there's people getting fucking raped, etc., etc., etc. Getting beaten, being waterboarded. Thousands upon thousands at all times. The fact that we live in a world where not only that's possible, but it's inevitable. It's not necessarily going to happen to you, but it is happening to lots of people throughout the world right now. We live in a world like that. And they knew that these things were going to occur. They have occurred throughout history. It's complete and utter bullshit. Another thing we ought to discuss is the inability to turn the pain off if we so choose. For instance, uh, you got you got shot in the leg. You're in a lot of pain. And with an act of your will, you can say, okay, I understand that I'm in pain. Clearly I'm bleeding out. With an act of my will, let's just turn the pain off. Or let's minimize it to the point of being nullified to a large degree. No, you don't have that option. If the Texas Chainsaw Massacre decides to cut off your fucking arm, you're going to feel it. It's the same with emotions. It is evil that with an act of my will, I cannot control or put forward a preferred emotional state. For instance, we feel emotions like anxiety, depression, anger, etc., etc., etc. All of these different forms of agitation. And a lot of people make the argument that uh, psychological pain is a is a unconsenting mental illness that's even worse than physical pain. Some people make the argument that not being able to see my family when that whole big bad bug shit was going on while I was in the hospital in pain, that psychologically that psychological pain of not being able to see my family while I was in pain was even worse than the pain itself, a lot of people will say. But back to the subject of horrible emotions that we have to fill against our will. 
why can't I say, right now, let us be happy? Or if I'm feeling anger, why can't I just say, okay, I don't want to feel angry anymore. Let's just be happy. But no, the anger persists. The uncomfortable emotion that you don't want to feel and you would rather feel the opposite just continues whether you like it or not. And that is all a part of deliberate, unintelligent design. Because like I said earlier, the definition of sentience is that which feels physical sensation and feels emotions. But if the sentience in question, by definition, is left with tons of physical pain, tons of horrible emotions, and he can't turn it off with an act of its will, does that justify bringing sentience into the world? No, it makes it completely unjustifiable. You know, Emile Charan said in one of his books that the creation was the first act of sabotage, and now you see why. You know, with the same argument that I made against pain, you know, it's too severe in sensitivity and far too much in quantity, it's really the same with emotions. Like, when we become angry, why do we have to often become, like, homicidally enraged at the drop of a hat? Why does it have to come on so strong? You know, if you don't want somebody to be homicidal, then you don't make it a possibility in the first place to become so angry that you would black out and become blood, tr blood, blood drunk thereby. Yeah. You don't want to create a homicidal race. You don't make them homicidable, if you like. If you don't want your race that you created to be depressed, then you don't make it depressionable. You know, when we use grammar and we put the word a bull, it means able. So when we say homicidable, it means they are able to commit homicide. They are able to be depressed. They are able, they are able, they are able. Why didn't you disallow those sorts of abilities? You know? Like, for example, why aren't we born into a world where we're unconditionally happy by default? Why don't we live in a world where there is no negative emotions, there is no physical pain? We seem to live in a world where it's the exact opposite. So much physical pain that if you were to even comprehend it, so much emotional pain that if you were even able to comprehend it just within a one mile radius of your current location, you would collapse on the spot. It's that much. Now, if you want to take the number 8 billion, so they say, upon the face of this earth, and you want to comprehend all of that emotional distress, all of that physical pain, Even if you are happier than a pig in shit. I still don't think it's justifiable. I wish there was something I can do, but I know that I could do nothing. Try to go to somebody who's feeling pain, and all you can do is comfort them. Sure, you can provide them um, friendship. You can assure that they don't have to go it alone, but you can't take their pain away physically. If somebody is emotionally distressed, you can't take it away physically by your presence. Your presence can provide comfort at best, but it's not going to take away the agony. It can only perhaps minimize it or distract them from it. I think anger in particular is an emotion that doesn't seem necessary to exist in the first place. All anger does 
is promotes destruction. It says, you have caused me pain. Now, I'm going to cause you pain. That's all anger is. It, it, it literally just promotes putting somebody else through emotional or physical pain. Because the whole will of anger is to destroy. And if we look at human history with all of its homicidal inclinations, anger was always the culprit. So we might ask ourselves, why does it exist? I certainly don't want to feel anger, but I feel it all the time against my will. I certainly don't want to feel sad, but I feel all of these uncomfortable things against my will. You know? I tell you what, the only thing that logically makes sense is that this is a louche farm. We're designed to feel extreme amounts of pain, physically and emotionally, because I believe that there is some kind of a metaphysical force that actually is feeding off of it. The Louche farm hypothesis makes perfect sense. Louche is um, a sort of emoting of a specific negative energy that the reality entity that we might call the demiurge with its archonic force might be feasting upon it. Because we didn't have to feel such intense negative emotions and pain, but we were designed that way because we're like these matrix batteries that something is feeding off of. You know, as above, so below. Everything in nature is feeding off of something smaller and inferior to it where it can't defend itself. And in the human kingdom, with its master-slaves dynamics, we do the same thing. So, if it happens in the animal kingdom, and it happens in the human kingdom, where you have one organism enslaving the other, or feeding off of the other, why wouldn't this be occurring metaphysically? Maybe like father, like son, we were designed and we have a certain genetic code by way of the father of lies or some sort of a satanic force. And we do these things because biologically, at least, maybe we're an extension of this very demiurge. And metaphysically, I'm almost certain that there is something that we cannot see, but it is present, omnipresent, in fact, and it is feeding off of it. I'm almost certain of it. There is an omnipresence of a energy vampiric sort that is having an all-you-can-eat buffet when it comes to everything from couples having an argument, uh, when it comes to oppression, when it comes to people having wars and killing each other, people being imprisoned and they're being buttfucked in their jail cell, not to mention what goes on in factory farming and all the pain and suffering that those animals go through, you know? The only thing that makes sense is that in every sweat in every sweatshop in a third world country, all of those wage slaves, quite literally so, being paid pennies by the hour, where there's bars on the window that makes it so they can't decide to jump out and unalive themselves, you know, I believe that there's something feeding off of it whether it be the sweatshop, whether it be sex slaves, whether it be this, that, or the other, all of that pain, emotionally and physically, there is something that is metaphysical that is feeding off of it. I'm certain. If you would like to add me on Facebook and send me a personal message, 
You can do so at Fish Corbett. That is F-I-S-H-C-O-R-B-E-T-T.